Tonight on The Roast, the Prime Minister of Norway goes undercover and we catch up with everything that happened on the campaign trail over the weekend. But first, Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott faced off last night in the first leaders' debate and hopefully the last leaders' debate. For the full rundown of what happened, let's cross to Mark Humphreys. In the words of the vet in 101 Dalmatians, let's hope that's the last one. Last night's debate had everything. Questions, answers, purple, but all that's been marred by allegations of cheating against Kevin Rudd. No, he didn't cover his lectern in silicon tape. He was caught reading off notes when the official debate document clearly stated the leaders may have a pen and paper on the lectern and no other documentation or props. Now, I don't want to be a dimmer but Rudd's clearly a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. That's also not how you spell lectern. And if Abbott knew the no documentation, no props rule was going to be ignored, he wouldn't have left his inflatable boat stopping Bonnie Tyler at home. Think about it, it's from Total Eclipse of the Heart. Many in the Liberal camp were frustrated with Rudd's use of notes, particularly Senator Matthias Corman, who said, Last night, Tony Abbott was looking like a leader. Kevin Rudd was looking like a reader. Ah, the old leader or reader test. The most effective way to measure leadership capability. Leader. Leader. Pumpkin eater. Simon Benson from the Daily Telegraph proved that their journalists can speak in a language other than Photoshop by asking the debaters whether they would build a second airport in Sydney. Mr Abbott, and forgive me for being blunt, sure. uh, but surely after 30 years of debate, it is time to act in the nation's economic interests and just build the bloody thing. In a living room somewhere, Tony Jones was shrieking, I'll take that as a comment. We also got an insight into the relationship between Mr Abbott and Fairfax journalist Peter Harcher. Thank you for remembering what I said, Peter. I'm happy to quote you back to you anytime, Mr Abbott. Get a room. Now for a further breakdown of Mr Rudd's remarks, Mark Humphreys joins us in the studio. Mark, Mark, Mark. So, Mark, as Kevin Rudd prepared his statements prior to the debate, he took to Twitter to ask, does anyone have some good jokes? And it seems someone did. We have to prepare for the day when the mining boom is coming okay. to an end. It's actually absolutely right. And what I am saying, well, Mr Abbott, you might laugh at that. But... Well, at least Abbott liked it. And on the subject of climate change, Rudd rekindled that old pass-ag streak that saw him booted in the first place. These are important measures, important steps. And we've never doubted the science, unlike some. You know who some is, Tony? It's you. You're some. That's enough of that. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. As for Abbott, he wasted no time clarifying the most complex issue of the night. This uh, debate is between Mr Rudd and me. Whoa, slow down, Sherlock. On the topic of the mining boom, Abbott didn't think much of Rudd's approach. And the trouble is we've just got the same waffle today that we had six years ago. Six-year-old waffle? Yuck! On the topic of same-sex marriage, Tony Abbott said... It's a very important issue. Uh, my sister Chris is in the audience. He's got you there, Mr Rudd. How many gay sisters do you have in the audience? But Abbott didn't stop there, though. If this issue were to come up again in the future, uh, it would be a matter for a future party room. OK, and to Prime Minister. If it comes up again, Mr Abbott, in the words of someone who's eaten some room temperature seafood, it's going to come up again. For The Roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thanks, Mark. Now, with less than a month to go before the election, the Labor Party has lost two candidates. Firstly, Ken Robertson handed in his resignation after calling Tony Abbott a bigot during an interview with Sky News. Then there was Jeff Lake, who was dumped by Kevin Rudd after it came to light that he had abused a fellow councillor during a meeting of Monash City Council in 2002. An argument in which he called Cathy McGee this and this. For more, we'll cross now to Jazz Twemlow, live in Canberra. Jazz. Thank you, Tom. What's really at issue here, on top of the original insult to Cathy McGee, is the sheer amount of time Jeff Lake has coasted along, not realising his political career was over. You don't think the fact that it was 11 years ago when he was 22 makes it less of an issue? It makes it more of an issue. Someone who hadn't committed career suicide 11 years ago could have been in his place. OK, so what's the correct course of action moving forward? Well, politicians need to be able to spot and recognise the precise moment their political ambitions get snuffed out so they can resign there and then. So, a little more this. So, I, I watched the debate last night. Oh, yeah. What'd you get up to? Um, I killed my childhood friend. Yep, you're done. <sighs> Come on. Okay, here's my council ID. Yeah, and... My council gun. Yeah, thank you. And a little less this. So uh, I watched the debate last night. Oh, yeah. What'd you get up to? Uh, I killed my childhood friend. <clears throat> All right, it's quitting time. <sighs> What? That thing you did 11 years ago? Oh, right. Yes. It would make things a lot easier. Back to you, Tom.
Thanks, Jazz. Meanwhile, over at the Coalition, the big news on the weekend was Tony Abbott's Twitter account, which received a boost of almost 70,000 followers in the past 12 hours. And that sounds great, but unfortunately for Mr Abbott, many of the accounts appear to be fake, which led to spokespeople from the Liberal Party, who we assume are real people, having to come out and publicly deny they were responsible for the fake followers, saying the Liberal Party has not purchased or artificially sought to inflate any social media numbers. For more on that, let's check in with Clark Richards and Nick Richardson, who've been at Liberal Party headquarters covering the election. Guys, uh, how has the Liberal Party responded to the news? Oh, it's not been good. De dealing with the media? Dealing with Tony. Oh, what happened? Well, it all started last night. You just got a new follower. And another one. And another one. You're doing it, Abbott. I knew you wouldn't have to do any of that Kevin Rudd lawn bowl crap to get followers. Shh. Hey, you shh, Tony's wife. Young people on the internet love your husband. See? Okay, so, so how did you find out? Well, I got in early this morning. Tony Abbott has 70,000 new followers who appear to be fake. Oh god, this looks bad. Clarky, guess what? He did it! Overnight, Abbott got 70,000 new Twitter followers that appear to be fake. Oh my god, this is gonna look bad. Yeah. It's gonna break his heart. Yeah. You know what he said to me over breakfast? Mm. He said, Nick, these 70,000 new Twitter followers are literally the only thing that's getting me through this campaign. I have never been so happy in my entire life, and it's all because of the 70,000 new Twitter followers. Burn all the newspapers. Burn the newspapers. You lied to Tony Abbott. No, 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 we massaged the truth. He just felt so damn popular. You did it, my friend. And without the lame selfies of you cutting yourself shaving like Rudd. You're such a good shaver. Yeah, what's your secret? Do you, do you go with the grain or against it? I can never work it out. <laughs> <laughs> so he hasn't found out about the fake followers? Oh, no, he did. I forgot to burn his computer. Yeah, he's been in the bathroom for the last hour. It's okay, buddy. It's it's just Twitter. Okay, so, so what are you going to do now? He said he won't come out of the bathroom until we get him another 70,000 actual followers. <laughs> It's not going to happen. Finally tonight, Norwegian Prime Minister Jens Stoltenberg made a big revelation on his Facebook page this morning. Though unfortunately I missed it because I'm not Facebook friends with Norwegian Prime Minister Jens Stoltenberg. But the surprise announcement was that he had gone undercover as a taxi driver in an attempt to hear voters' real concerns, saying, if there's one place where people say what they think, it's in the taxi. And as an undercover cabbie, he'd have heard nothing but the cold hard truth about, so how's your day been? Hot today, and just up here on the left, thanks. Instead of a cab, if you want one place where people really say what they think, check the back door of a toilet, because Ricky and Trisha really are forever, but don't call that number for a good time. I did, and it was not a good time. But what about Stoltenberg's disguise? Sunglasses! He's like Clark Kent with transition lenses, except for when he took them off as well and just hid behind his skin face and a name tag with his actual name on it. So no big surprise that even Grandpa Cataract saw right through the disguise. You bet he's Stoltenberg, and everyone figured it out immediately. The family, the college girls, and the Spanish ladies who didn't even speak Norwegian, but that was okay because Stoltenberg also speaks Spanish. So they talked politics, they talked business, they talked about how Stoltenberg hadn't driven for eight years and it kind of showed. <laughs> but the people loved it and it was considered a success because apparently Norway is the best possible version of humanity. I just don't see it going quite as smoothly here if Kevin Rudd hopped behind the wheel. You know, when I see you from behind, you look like Mr Sheen in a wig. <laughs> Wait, Mr Sheen doesn't drive a taxi, you're the Prime Minister! You're the guy who stabs people in the back! I've got a back! I'm getting out of this taxi! <laughs> Next left, Prime Minister. Jeez, I'm glad I wasn't in that cab, otherwise I'd have told Rudd he was a visionless, boring wanker. All right, so that's it. Come on. Oh, God. Yep. Come on. Come on. Yep, and the... Uh, oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>